Welcome to Discovering the Jewish Jesus. I'm your host, Dustin Roberts, and today Rabbi Schneider explains why you were chosen. Well, many of us often wonder why we have difficulties in this life and why we struggle and strive. And today, Rabbi Schneider is going to show us that the struggles we face are not without purpose. God uses everything in our lives to conform us into the perfect image of his son, Jesus. And as we turn to the eighth chapter of the book of Romans to continue our study on this complex and amazing book, we're going to see God has a plan, purpose, and destiny for each and every one of us. Now here is Rabbi Schneider from the beautiful mountains of Colorado. I'm continuing today in a study through the book of Romans, and we are looking today in the eighth chapter at the 28th verse, which is perhaps the most well-known verse in the book of Romans. You've heard me teach on this before. I wanna pick up here, do a little bit of review, then we're gonna push forward. Hear the word of God. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord abides forever. Hear the word. And we know, Paul says, that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. So first of all, this verse right here, it's just a philosophy that many people have, even if they don't say they believe in God. Many people that have no religious affiliation, express no faith in Yeshua, Jesus, or God, they'll say when something bad happens, oh, it's gonna work out for the good. Oh, there's a plan in this. So this philosophy that Paul has exclaimed in Romans 8, 28, is a philosophy that much of the world holds, whether they're following Jesus or not. But what they miss is the next verse, because the next verse, beloved one, explains what Paul means when he says, all things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. And Paul explains that what he is meaning is that God causes everything that you and I pass through in life both circumstantially, emotionally, and in every other realm, God is using everything in our life to conform us to the image of Jesus. The good things that you experience, the pleasant things that you experience, as well as the hardships that you and I experience, God is using all of it somehow to transform us and to change us into the likeness of Jesus. So now let me read Romans 8, 28, and the next verse, and you'll hear what I'm saying. Hear the word of God. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good, to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined. I want you just to hang for a minute on these two words, foreknew and predestined. So this concept of everything being used for good has to do with those whom God foreknew and predestined. And so I'm asking the question now, who does everything work for good towards? Those, Paul says in the next verse, whom the Father foreknew and he predestined. In other words, Paul says, if Father God foreknew you and predestined you, and Paul's gonna continue to be conformed to the image of his Son, then everything that's happening in your life he's using for good. Let me read it one more time altogether. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son so that he, speaking of Yeshua, Jesus, would be the firstborn among many brethren. Now in the next verse, in the 30th verse, Paul's gonna talk more about this concept of being foreknown and predestined. But I want you to hang with me for a second. I want us to stop and consider this because this is biblical language that few people have been taught on. What Paul is saying here is that there's a people, there are individuals whom the Father foreknew 
and predestined. Now, to give a little bit more explanation of this, I want to go to the book of Ephesians, chapter number one, because in the book of Ephesians, Paul uses some explanatory language that helps us to understand what Paul is talking about. Now, remember, the same one that wrote the book of Romans, Paul wrote Ephesians. Listen to what Paul said in Ephesians. He's speaking to the Father. Just as he chose us, just as the Father chose us in him, in Jesus, before the foundation of the world. And then Paul continues in the fifth verse, he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ. So you see in Romans chapter eight and Ephesians chapter one, Paul was talking about the same thing. Paul is saying in Ephesians that God chose us before the foundation of the world. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. And what did he choose us for? In the fifth verse, he predestined us to adoption as sons. So God chose us and predestined us to sonship in the book of Ephesians. Now compare that to what Paul just got saying in the 30th verse of Romans 8. For those whom he foreknew, he foreknew those whom he had chosen that we just read about in Ephesians 1. And when were we chosen? When were God's own that were predestined chosen? Paul explains that we were chosen before the foundation of the world. So beloved one, before you were born, you were chosen. Just like Jeremiah said, that the father knew him and appointed him a prophet to the nations before he was even born. Okay, so God had a destiny for you and I before we were even born. Because remember, in the Lord, there is no time. And his choice of us, Paul's gonna explain in the book of Romans, was it because he saw something better in us than other people? His choice of us was simply the result of his own will. He simply decided, beloved one, to place his love upon you through nothing that was better about you because the Bible says you and I in the book of Ephesians, we were by nature children of wrath even as the rest indulging in the desires of the mind and of the flesh. Paul said, we're no different than anybody else. But God, because of the great love with which he loved us, he chose us. So let's continue on. We're in the book of Romans, chapter eight, verse 29 and 30. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Now this should help you to understand what your destiny is. If you wanna know what your purpose is, your purpose is declared right here. God's purpose for your life and my life is to be conformed to the image of his son. And so above everything else, your purpose and my purpose is to be conformed to the image of Jesus. Because God says this is the banner over our life, because the father said this is the destiny I have for you, you and I now should filter life through this lens. In other words, when we face obstacles or difficulties, we can't just look at the temporary aspect of the difficulty. We have to understand that God uses difficulties to conform us to the image of Jesus. This is why the Bible says that the temporary trials that we go through aren't worthy to be compared with the eternal glory that they're working in us. God uses hardship to conform us to the image of a son, just like a diamond. A diamond becomes a diamond by being subjected to hardship. And so let's continue on. He continues in the next verse, verse number 30. And these whom he predestined, he also called. So because the Lord chose you, Paul got done saying, those whom he chose, he predestined for his purpose. He then predestined you to be conformed to the image of his son. Those whom he predestined in verse number 30, he also called. So because you were chosen and predestined, you were called. What does it mean to be called? It means that God called you. Did you ever look around and wonder, why do I believe? Why is Jesus so important to me? And most of the people around me that I know, they don't really seem to care that much about Jesus. Even those that call themselves Christians, it doesn't seem like they think much about Jesus. They don't talk much about Jesus. It doesn't seem like they're spending much time seeking Jesus. They don't really seem to have a great passion or a hunger for the Lord. It's because, beloved, you were chosen 
And because you were chosen, you were predestined and called. God called you to himself. This is why Jesus said in John 6, no man comes to me unless the Father draws him. John 6, Jesus looked at all the people that weren't believing in him. They were mocking him. They were looking at him with a condescending attitude. And Jesus' response to the multitudes that looked at him in a negative way, his response to that was, you know what? No man comes to me unless the Father draws him. All the Father calls will come to me. Everyone that hears and learns from the Father, Jesus said in John 6, comes to me. This is what Paul is talking about here in Romans 8. Those whom the Father chose and predestined, he called. Because he had a destiny for you before you were born, there was a time in your life where the Spirit of the Lord drew you to Jesus. And in drawing you to Jesus, the Spirit was drawing you, beloved one, into relationship with Father God. Because this is why Jesus came, to bring us into relationship with Father. This is what Paul is talking about here. We've been adopted. We've been given the spirit of adoption. Jesus said, no man comes to the Father but through me. So God's destiny for you is to be his son or his daughter. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus with Rabbi Schneider. We want you to know there are so many ways that you can watch and listen to Rabbi's programs. Online, you'll find us at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. You can find resources like our television broadcast schedule, Rabbi's messages on your podcasting platform, YouTube content, devotionals, and much more. You can even follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Check out all these resources online today. When you give to Discovering the Jewish Jesus, it allows us to spend more time focusing on what really matters. And for us, that means getting God's word out to as many people as possible. And right now, at this very moment, there is someone who needs to hear Rabbi's practical biblical teaching. And your financial gift is what makes that possible. To donate, go online to discoveringthejewishjesus.com. Now to conclude today's message, here's Rabbi Schneider. So once again, those whom he predestined, he also called, and these whom he called, he also justified. What does it mean to be justified? It means, beloved, that you and I are standing holy and blameless before the Father, justified right now. Why? We don't look at ourselves, because if we look at ourselves, we say, how can I be justified? I mean, we know the accusatory thoughts we have about people sometimes. We know our jealousy, our ambition, our pride. So we look at ourselves, we think, well, how can I be justified? But the point is, beloved, we're not justified because of who we are in and of ourselves. We're justified because we're in Jesus. And that's what Paul was talking about. He said, He gave up everything in life that he would be found in Christ, not being justified by the works of the law or by his own effort at righteousness, but be justified by the one, beloved, that died in our place. This is what Paul was also speaking about in the passage that I just referred to earlier in the book of Romans. It says that we have been chosen in verse number four of Ephesians 1, were chosen before the foundation of the world that we would be holy and blameless. You and I stand today, right now, Ephesians 1, 4, holy and blameless before the Father in love. I want you to take that in. God will never love you and I more than he loves us right now. We're called to perfection because we're called to be conformed to the image of Jesus. We're on the journey to perfection, but even now, you and I that are not yet perfect, or although we're on the journey to perfection, but we all recognize that we're not perfect yet. The scripture says, he that says he has no sin is a liar and the truth is not in him. So even though we're not yet perfect, still the Father looks at us and loves us as though we are perfect already because 
of Jesus because we're in him. So this is what Romans 8 is talking about. God's using everything in our life to continue to conform us to the purpose of his, which is to conform us to the image of his son. And that right now, you and I stand before him perfect in his love. And Paul continues, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. If you want to know if you're a winner or not, read this verse for yourself. Romans 8.30. You're chosen, predestined, justified, called, and you are going to experience what it means to be glorified. Beloved, you and I, we are so much more than we realize that we are. You and I, sometimes we look at ourselves, we look at ourselves in the mirror, we at our bellies, we don't look glorified. We look at our face, we see new wrinkles coming every year. We experience things in our bodies, pains in our bodies, and we think, wow, if, if I'm glorified, I don't really feel glorified. I don't really look like I'm glorified when I look in the mirror. But beloved, this is the mystery. This is the great hope. This is the culmination of our calling. You are going, listen to me, to be glorified. Eye is not seen and ear is not heard. Never has it entered into the heart of men the things that God has prepared for those that love him. You have a destiny and a future beyond your wildest imagination. Listen to what Paul said again, Romans 8, 30. Those whom he justified, these he also glorified. Think about it. When we were young in life, many of us, we experienced so many memorable things that we look back on, experiencing life and the newness of life for the first time. I know when I was growing up, I used to play a lot in my backyard. And my backyard, it seemed huge to me. I remember going in my backyard and looking under rocks and picking the mint leaves in my backyard. And it seemed like a huge universe to me. And then we moved. And about three years after we moved, I went back one day to visit my old house. And when I looked at my backyard and it was like this little chunk of grass. And yet it seemed like a whole world to me when I was a little boy. And the point that I'm making is when we're young and we experience things for the first time, life is so big and so grand and we feel such emotions. Do you remember your first kiss? Do you remember your first date? I mean, we have these memories, but the older we get, we kind of come to a place when it comes to the things of the world, been there, done that. The things of the world don't really entice us like they used to. It's like they don't hold the same allure that they used to. We've been there, we've done that. It gets old. And so by the time you get to be 80 years old, many people are not able even to taste food anymore. If they have ambitions of getting a great, you know, job with a huge vocational history going forward, tough to do that when you're 80. What's left in life when you're 80? The good news, beloved, is there's a lot more left in life because we have a destiny that's bound up in God that's bound up in heavenly places. We're gonna be glorified and we're gonna experience things that are inexpressible, so full of life, so full of beauty, so full of power. God has a plan and a future and a destiny for us, beloved. So I wanna encourage you today to keep on hoping, to keep on believing, to keep on praising, to keep on giving glory to God. Keep your faith fresh. Keep the oil burning. Because soon, beloved, life on this earth is gonna be over. You're gonna meet your creator and you're gonna be glorified in him forever and ever. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus. And if you'd like to know more about this ministry, then please visit us online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. And hey, while you're there on our website, make sure and check out our latest resources and study guides. We've got a lot of messianic content and articles, inspirational letters from Rabbi's wife, Cynthia, and they're bound to encourage and equip you this year. You can even learn more 
more about partnering with us. And speaking of partnering, we just wrapped up a very special month of celebrating our monthly partners. And it was such an important and well-received season. And if you missed any of the partner interviews and testimonials, then be sure to go back and listen to those programs. We really made an effort to highlight the reasons why this ministry is so unique and why your partnership is so valuable to us. And to talk about that a little bit more, here is Rabbi Schneider once again. Beloved, because of you, we're able to preach the gospel as it was originally given by the Apostle Paul. Many of you realize that there needs to be a correction in the message that's being proclaimed. By preaching through the book of Romans line by line, we're getting a balanced understanding of what the gospel message really is, and people need to hear this truth. You see, Yeshua gave us commission, and the commission was to preach the gospel to all creation. And the gospel that needs to be preached, beloved, is the gospel that you're hearing. Through your financial support, millions around the globe are hearing the good news of Messiah Jesus. And you know what, beloved? In participating with this ministry, you are playing a part in preparing the Earth's atmosphere for King Jesus' return, and you're being obedient to what he told you to do, which is to spread the good news of his coming return. Thank you for your financial support. As you're being blessed by this ministry, I would simply ask you, beloved, to support it with your finances because it's a spiritual law of the kingdom. If the Lord is leading you to support this ministry, then I would like to invite you to give a financial gift today. You can reach us at 800-777-7835 or automate your gift online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. You can also send a gift of any amount in the mail when you write to Discovering the Jewish Jesus, P.O. Box 777, Blissfield, Michigan, 492. As our way of saying thank you for your generous financial gifts, we'll send you Rabbi Schneider's message of the month along with our current newsletter. There's never been a better time to partner with us financially and prayerfully, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. And then don't forget that Monday at sunset, will begin Purim, or the Feast of Lots. It's a great holiday to celebrate God's providence with your family. Jesus, as a Jewish man, would have celebrated Purim. And that's what we're all about here, helping you understand the Jewish Jesus. You can learn more about the Jewish Jesus at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. And right now, let's wrap up today's message with a special blessing. The words from the Aaronic Blessing in the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verses 22 through 27, helps us to realize how good God is to you and I personally. So receive his blessing into your life, and then, beloved one, go bless somebody else in Jesus' name today. Yair Yahweh Panavelecha Vihunecha Isa Yahweh Panavelecha Veasem Lecha The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift you up with his countenance and the Lord give you, beloved one, his peace. God bless you and shalom. I'm your host, Dustin Roberts, and Discovering the Jewish Jesus is a production of Shalom Ministries. Join us next week when Rabbi Schneider continues our study on journeying through the Book of Romans on Discovering the Jewish Jesus.